I've got my posse in the house. <laughs> um, first thing I want to say is, it is an honor to be in your midst. This has been a phenomenal experience, and each and every one of you are global leaders, and uh, I just want to say thank you for being here and for inviting me. Uh, you know my name, you know my title. I don't know if everyone knows what ESPN is, Okay, we are a sports media company uh, focused on innovation and audience expansion. I've had lots of titles. I've been a journalist, I still am a journalist. I'm an editor, but my favorite title is storyteller. Storytelling is the most fundamental way we relate to the world. At ESPN, we immerse ourselves in the art and act of storytelling. And that comes with a canvas as wide as the human experience. Stay calm. Okay, so our motto is, what if I told you? Which encourages you to lean in and open yourself up to something new. We use sports as an entry point to capture the viewer's attention. So we can share something that either you didn't know or never thought you'd care about. Because it's not just about sports. It's never just about sports. We tackle issues that are larger than life, politics, gender, equ equity, civil rights, pay equity, freedom of expression, identity in every facet. Nobody wants to be force-fed issues, but when you can move people emotionally through a story, you find they come your way in a new and completely different way, and sports can be a great unifier. Take Pink Card, you just saw that in our sizzle. Our audio documentary about women in Iran who for years fought for the simple right to enter a soccer stadium to watch the game they love. Our story happened literally at the same time as the story was unfolding of women taking to the streets and ripping off their hijabs. I think everyone remembers that story. But we told that story of Iran through a game. And for women, telling stories comes naturally. We are natural storytellers. It's organic to who we are. It's also intergenerational. We find through characters like 87-year-old motorcycle Mary McGee, the original badass, she forced the the sport that she loves of racing, to change the rules of the game because she was beating the men. Younger audiences crave these kinds of stories. They say to us, if those women can do it, so can we. And remember, you can't really know where you're going until you know where you have been. Which brings me to one of the most important projects we've ever done at ESPN. It's called 
black girls play. It's a wonderful little film. 18 minutes of pure joy, and it was shortlisted for the Oscars last year. So please enjoy this brief clip, which highlights the rent, re, sorry, resonance of hand games. <laughs> So that's the origin story of music, hip-hop, jazz, syncopation, rhythm. So many of the genres and styles that have influenced culture in America and beyond. All right, but is it a sport? Yeah, okay. Perhaps not fully, but ask yourself, don't sports start with the simple act of playing? Learning how to cooperate, collaborate. I'll bet that most of you no matter where you're from, played a version of hand games. Come on, let's see hands. Excellent. But playing is not just playing. It is a way of communication, an expression of who we are. That film takes us back to who black people are in America. Even when we arrived against our will during the time of slavery with nothing, we managed to create using whatever was available. Often that was our hands. This is especially true for communities of color. Even when the odds are against us, we'll find a way to show you otherwise. These games are an expression of the embodied memory that is the story of who we are. So sports gives us the power to talk about bigger issues using a different platform than politics or legislation. In the US, we're celebrating 52 years since the passage of Title IX, designed to guarantee equity for women in sports and beyond. And there's a tendency to say, uh, okay, so we're good now, right? Yeah, no. No. We're still fighting that fight, and we have a long way to go. And it's not just in America. To get where we still need to go, storytelling will play an indispensable role. So I encourage you to tell your stories. Use whatever you have to address inequity and inequality in your own community. In times of dread and anxiety like these, with forces seemingly beyond our control, storytelling gives us back a sense of agency. Images and sounds can bring us back to a place where we feel all is not lost. So that's the challenge I offer all of you. Help rewrite the narrative of the world through the stories you can tell. Thank you. <laughs> 